thank you guys for joining us. You are logging into the Outlook training for LSMTAP. Uh, put on by Sandy Rylander and Rylander Consulting. So my name is Sandy Rylander. I wanted to start out by introducing myself, but before that even, if you could please unmute and feel free to ask any questions that you want. Just make sure that while unmuted, you don't put us on hold because then we get the hold music. What we're going to do today, first of all, a little bit about my background. Um, I have been teaching for 26 years, started with WordPerfect, Lotus, and DOS. Uh, and then moved about 20 years ago, I started teaching the Microsoft Office Suite. And Outlook is one of the programs I've been teaching for quite some time. It's a great program, and I'm assuming most of you have already used it. Is that an incorrect assumption, or is that correct? Do we have all people who have used it in the past and are primarily online today to learn new tricks and fun things that you can do with Outlook? I guess I'll go ahead and get started. But for now, I'll go ahead and get started with mail. So right now we are in the new okay. look. This is uh, Outlook 2010, and I'm sure there's probably different versions going on out there. So if you're not seeing something that you want me to show you, then please let me know. But this look, let me uh, minimize this over here, uh, has some flexibility to it. So way over on the left side of the screen, this is called the navigation area where you can go from folder to folder, and you may be seeing it open like this, or you may be seeing it, notice up here there's an arrow. If I click on the arrow, do you see how it flattens it out? And so you still have access to everything. Notice it says inbox here, and sent items here, that sort of thing. So you can still click on these, but it takes up less room. So if you have a smaller screen, you can do that. I prefer to have it open, and then if you come over to this right-hand side, yeah, it allows you to but I'm not. So in this mail window, like I said, for the first time you are able to see some of your appointments, which is something people asked for. Notice that even though I'm seeing some of these appointments, it says two more appointments down below. So if I click on two more appointments, do you see how it brings me immediately to my uh, calendar? But you can also, if you want to see them, Notice again we have a line here where we get a double-headed arrow, which always means per side. So I can actually see more appointments right here in this window if I want to, or more tasks. It's completely up to you. So in Outlook, when you're looking at your email, uh, normally when you're looking at your email, you're seeing it arranged by date and with the newest on top. Does anybody know if I wanted to see everything, let's say, that um, Tyler sent me, does there, anybody know how I can arrange by something other than by date, like by from? Well, up right here where it says that. arrange by date, I can click on that, and you can see all the different ways you can arrange. So if I click on arrange by from, notice that now I've got it all in order of the person who sent it to me. Now, if I'd like to see that just one entry per person, does anybody know how I can collapse my view? Well, this brings me to anybody who's with NJP, hopefully they know that the one thing that I ask people to remember in every single class is if you don't know how to do something, right click on whatever you don't know how to do. So if I want to collapse all of these headings, so this would be one of the headings. This is a person's name. This is a heading. If I just want to collapse the one, notice there's an arrow to the left of it. If I click on that, do you see how it collapses it? And if I click again, it expands it. But if I want to collapse every single one, that would take a lot of time, right? So this is one of those areas that if you don't know how to collapse them all at the same time, you would come to the heading, you, you need to make sure you're on the right area, and just right click. Notice when I right click, the very top says, would you like to collapse all groups? So then I can collapse them all and I can see all the different people who have sent me email. Let's say that I'd like to, I'm at the top of this list now, and I want to get an email sent by Sue Entrman. I can just click on any one of these headings and start typing her name, and boom. I'm right there. It's a really nice, fast way of getting all of the emails from a person. 
Okay. I can go back to by date if I want to. And I can do the same thing by date. If I want to collapse all of these headings, once again, all I do is what? Right click. So I'm going to right click on a heading and collapse them all. And do you see how I see them all collapse like that? So I can just concentrate on today if I want to, or yesterday, or whatever I want to do with that. If I then want to expand all headings, how would I do that? Well, once again, if you don't know how to do it, right click on whatever you don't know how to do. So I'm going to right click, right click, and I'm going to expand all groups. It's that easy. Okay? So one of the things in email, most people have a lot of email, and they want to find a particular email. And so what they do is they come up to where it says search inbox, and they click on search inbox. And let's say I'd like to find an email from a lady named Carol. So I'm going to type in Carol. Now notice if I look in the bottom left corner, I don't know if you can see, but it found 58 items either from Carol or to Carol or with Carol anywhere in the body, right? It finds it no matter where it is. And some people may say, well, that's great. It found all of Carol's items. And I say, wow, that's a lot of items for me to look through, 50 items. I'm a slow reader. What can Outlook do to make my finding things faster? So luckily, a lot of people don't notice that once they click in this find box, that they get a whole new toolbar just devoted to searching that could give them so much better answers to their search. So for instance, let's say I know that whatever email Carol sent had an attachment with it. So, and let's say that what I want also is, are just those items from Carol. So first of all, I'm going to delete Carol. I'm going to say I only want items from Carol. I don't care about the ones I sent to her. I want just the ones from. By clicking on from and then typing in Carol, it reduces the amount already from 50-something to 30-something. Do you see that in the bottom left corner? It says items 31. So I've already reduced what I have to read through by 20 items. Now, I know that whatever it is has an attachment. So I click on has attachments. So I can just keep adding. So now I went from 50 to 30 to 6. On top of that, I know that it has the words UAR somewhere, excuse me, wait, let me backspace, uh, somewhere in the subject. So I'm going to click on subject and type in UAR. So now instead of 50, I reduce to three the number of items that I have to look at. And for me, that's a huge time saver. So when you look for items, whenever you click, now when I first learned about this, I was, let me bring it all back. When I first learned about this, I was like, okay, now I know somewhere there's supposed to be a tab that says search. Where did it go? I can't find it. I can't find it because I have not yet clicked in the search box. When you click in the search box, you get the search tools. It's what they call context sensitive. It is only going to show it to you when you need it. So don't forget to click in the search box, and then you have all of these different things at your disposal that will make finding items so much faster. So we've got two quick questions here. Uh, the first of which is, how do you search in all folders, not just the current one you're in? That is such a brilliant question. I was just about to get there. Um, because what I've taught you so far in this box, do you see where it says refine? And so this is narrowing your search from subject. All of these have the effect of narrowing your search down so you get fewer results. When you want more results, just go to the left where it says scope. And so here, notice the default is current folder. But if I want to search all subfolders, now subfolders, if we're looking at a hierarchy like this, notice that this is inbox. So all of these are subfolders because they're indented one level 
to the inbox, right? So those are subfolders. So that's your first or your next greater uh, area of search. Then you can say all mail items. So no matter where it is in any mailbox, it's going to find a mail item. And then including deleted and sent? Uh, if it's a, yes, it should including deleted and sent, yes. But then what if I want to find Carol even if I have an appointment with her? Then you can say all Outlook items. So then it's even going to find it whether if it's a contact or if it's a calendar item or, any, or a task. So right here is where you can increase or decrease the scope, because if I come up to all mail items and then change my mind, I can go back to current. Current is always the default, but this is where you can change scope. So here you've learned how to narrow, and by the way, these are the ones people use most frequently, but if you click on more, you'll see there's even more things that you can narrow the scope. And then you have recent searches. So that if you're continually doing the same search over and over again and you don't want to input it each time, notice that you can find recent searches here as well. So you said there were two questions, so I answered one. What was the other one, Brian? Uh, the other one was, why would the from or subject options be grayed out in that refinement area? That is a really good question. They, they're in their own inbox and they're they're not in calendar or anything. They're in their inbox. They clicked in search and it's grayed out. The from and subject appear to be. Never seen that. I'd love to look at that. I, I've never seen the from and the subject grayed out. If they are in and let me see if I have it totally empty. If, if there's no possible options, maybe? You... No. Even when I'm in a completely empty folder, uh. well, I don't have a from. But I still have, interesting, I saw the subject is still available. So I'm not, I really, that's a great question. I have no idea. We have to research that, I guess. Um, so sorry, I don't have the answer to that one. I've not seen that in the past. Any other questions on search? Okay. Um, so we've learned how to search. We've learned how to sort. And by sorting, I, I'm talking about arrange by. Now, another new feature that a lot of people don't know about under Arrange By is arranging by or showing, excuse me, as conversations. Um, this is also something that's new in 2010, showing as conversations. Let me go ahead and click on that. No, notice when I click on that, it, it says, do you want to show messages arranged by conversations just in this folder or all folders? I always like to start small, so I'm going to say just this folder. And so what happens is Outlook will group all email on a particular thread. And a thread would be in Outlook considered the subject of the email. So for instance, um, Bridget's actually sitting in the classroom with me, and if she and I wrote emails back and forth, if she said, hey, you know, when can you train for NJP, and I said, well, I, I have these dates, and she said, well, I think this date will work, that would be all considered part of the conversation. If you show in conversations, do you notice that then you get these little arrows if it really is a conversation? So if I click on that arrow, do you notice how it starts opening it up? And this is a really cool feature because notice that this one was Carol, then this one is not even in this folder. This is in my sent items. So I can not only see what she sent to me, but I can see what I sent to her. I can just go through and look at all the different emails on that thread. Not only that, but how many of you have really large inboxes? And you go, wow, I sure wish I could reduce it from 5,000 or 20,000 to to just a reasonable one or 2,000. Well, the nice thing with conversation view is you have some new options here, and one of them is cleanup. If I click on this down arrow next to cleanup, do you see where it says cleanup conversation? What cleanup conversation will do is it will get rid of every one of these except the very last one 
because you know when you go back and forth replying, you know how it maintains that threat, all that information. So rather than having 10 emails that all contain the same information, it just keeps the last one. So you can clean up just this one conversation or all of the conversations in the folder or all of the conversations in the folder and the subfolder. Now when it says clean up, it means delete. So please, please, please go slow. Start out just by cleaning up a conversation. See what it deletes. Make sure that it's doing what you want it to do, that you like the results, and then when you've used it for a while, if you want to try folder, go ahead. What I always suggest, since it's going to send it to your deleted items, prior to even doing this, I would right click on my deleted items and I would say empty deleted items or empty folder. That way, if you clean up, let's say, the folder and more gets deleted than you had hoped, it's a simple matter of dragging it right back into the inbox to undelete them, to bring them back. Okay? Okay, we've got a so few more questions cleanup. here. First, yeah. on, the, on search, um, when you search in a folder, is it the folder or the folder and its subfolders by default? The folder only by default, and you know that by clicking in here, do you see where the current ah. folder looks kind of orangey? So you know that the default is current folder versus clicking on subfolders, all subfolders. Good question. Was okay. there another one too, Brian? I is there, is there an undo option if you clean up too much? No, but that's why I was saying the undo option is, so let's say uh, you do do it. So now you're in your, not junk mail, but you're in your deleted items. Because I have deleted my items, right, beforehand, and so it's clean, now let's say all of these got deleted accidentally, or I didn't want them to be deleted, I could just highlight them by clicking on the first one, shift clicking on the last one, or if they aren't all together, control clicking selectively, and then going to any of these blue ones and dragging them straight back into my inbox. They're just items, so just drag them straight back in and they're all safe and sound, ready to go. So to undo it, you basically have to, un you have to go into deleted items the, and put them back them in. Back. Yeah. Um, there was one other here, which I, I'll read it as is. I'm not exactly sure what it's asking, which is another question. What happens if I do know how to do something and the collapse button does not appear? If I do know how to do something and the collapse button doesn't appear? Okay. It, uh, it, it didn't make exact sense to me as written. Okay. Okay, well, um, the, the one way that for me it might make sense is, okay, so what I told you was in order to collapse these, um, what you have arranged by, so like I've arranged by date, if I right click on today or yesterday, I have collapse all groups as an option because each of these are a group. Um, I'm going to expand all again. If I come back here, the reason that they are collapsed by groups is because notice I've got this show in groups checked. Show in groups gives you this today, yesterday, that sort of thing. Now myself, I'm not a real big fan of these groups because they take up, you know what, almost a half an inch of screen space. So I actually, a lot of times, I'll take off show in groups, which is right here, so I just click it to uncheck it. So I still have everything arranged by date. I just don't have the little today, yesterday stuff. So I have more room to see things on my screen. So now if I right click, I'm not going to see collapse by because there is no group to collapse. So I don't know if that was the issue or not, hmm. but that would be one reason why you would not see that. Uh, they, they said, thank you, I, I found it. Oh, okay, well, great. All right, so, um, so anyway, so conversation view, once again, means that everything having to do with you going back and forth, replying with a person, um, if you click on that, you're going to see those different items. So it's, it's a nice view. I'm going to get back out of conversation view just by unchecking it. 
and again, just this folder. And have you ever had where someone, this is another neat feature that a lot of people don't know exists. Um, let's say that uh, I know I have some email from Sue Entrman, so I'm going to use her as an example. Let's say Sue calls me, and uh, uh, normally what I would do if she said, hey, could you look at the email I sent you on this date? Usually the first thing I would do is change from date to from, remember we did that, and then start typing Sue. As soon as I hang up with Sue now, I'm going to change back to by date because I really don't want everything sorted by from. So I would rather have my cake and eat it too. I'd like to be able to see just Sue's items, but I don't want to have to change my sort by or arrange by. So there's a new feature in Office 2010 called the People View. If I look at, I don't even have to look at this, but I just want to show you what it looks like, View People Pane. But it's this little tab down here that people don't realize is here. Notice it says Sue Entrman here because I'm on Sue. But if I go to Teresa McLean, it'll say Teresa McLean. I'm going to go back up and click on Sue. Sue. And what I'm going to do now, in the bottom right corner of this little people pane, I'm going to click on the arrow, and that shows me everything that had anything to do with Sue. Now, I'm not really interested in everything. I'm just interested in email. So notice, and by the way, if you want this to be bigger, you can drag or reduce. So going to this line allows you to manipulate the size of the window. Going to this little arrow uh, collapses and expands. So you can either collapse and expand or you can drag either way. But what I wanted to show you is you have different options over here. The top one shows everything. Okay, so meetings, if you have meetings with Sue or whatever. Um, the next one shows news feeds, which I don't use Outlook for at all. But this is my favorite, and I just leave it on here. It says, show email messages that you've gotten from this person. You can also say, hey, I only want to see email messages that have attachments from this person. Is that not the coolest thing? OK, so if you cannot see people paint, but do you see the word file? Yes. Yeah. OK, then it's something that tech support is going to have to um, enable for you. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you. Uh, okay. You're very welcome. Okay. So let's go back to, I'm going to go back to my home view. Um, another, so, so we're going to go on to something different now. I'm going to go into actually creating a new email. And I'm going to assume everybody knows how to do that. So what I wanted to show you here is, first of all, does everybody have, a signature block, like this one. No? So if you want to create a signature, uh, notice that now all you have to do is start a new email, and it actually has the word signature right here. So if you click on that, and you go down to signatures, hi, um, it allows you to create a new signature. And so what you do is you can click on New, okay, and give it a name, any name. Now notice I named my signatures, one I named New and one I named Reply, because I wanted two different signatures. I wanted one for new email that was kind of long and had all my information, and then I wanted one that was shorter, okay? So I'm going to uh, make this, uh, the name I'll do New, garbage because I don't want to keep it. Click on OK. So now I've got my new signature. I just need to type whatever it is that I want to have in here, my company name, my phone number. I would put everything under the sun, as you can see here. OK? I love people who give me lots of information about themselves, and I'll show you why. It's so nice in a minute. OK? Um, Oh, I don't think I should have done that. Oh, well. Um, so, but my phone number, all of that information here. Okay, so when you're done, oh, by the way, if you'd like it to look pretty with different colors and things like that, you just highlight your name, 
You can change the look of font if you want to something like a, um, a script font or whatever you'd like. I think I use script on mine. You can make it larger if you'd like. You can change the color to something more appealing to you. Whatever it is that you'd like to do, do that. Now, what I would do then is I copy that one. I'm going to save it, copy that one, and I create another new one called reply. And I'm going to make that reply garbage. Now, the reason I copied it is so that I don't have to recreate the whole thing. I can just paste it and then take out all the bits of information that I don't want to have in my reply because a reply means that I'm sending it back to a person that might already know this information and I don't want that big long signature, I just want a little one. Does that make sense? Okay. Yeah. After you have those signatures, then if you want those to be the new defaults, you can change this from new to new garb. You probably have nothing there right now. Uh, or maybe you already, maybe it already put that in there for you. Usually for new messages it will. And then I can change reply to reply garb if I want. Okay. Now I don't really want that. I'm going to go back. And I'm going to delete these two new ones for now. So you see it's very easy to create and delete. But notice that my new automatically came up when I did a new email, right? Now what happens, what if I were going to send this to Bridget, who I've sent many emails to, even though this is a new email to her, I only want her to have that short reply one because she doesn't need all that information. Does anybody know how to change that signature on the fly, what I call on the fly? Well, you do because I taught you earlier that the only thing that you have to remember is if you don't know how to do something, right click on whatever you don't know how to do. So if you don't know how to change the signature, you're going to right click on it. Notice it gives you all your options. Click on reply and boom, done. Change my mind again, right click, click on new, done. If you want no okay. signature on that list. If you want no signature on it, then you highlight it and press delete. Okay? Yep. So one of the things I do on my quick access toolbar, I have the different signatures on my quick access toolbar so that I can easily put it on that way. So if you want, you could have no signature if you want and just add them when you want to. That would not be my preference. I at least want to have my name. And by having my name, then I can right click and change to whatever other signature block I'd like. And you could put disclaimers in your signature block. You can do all sorts of neat things in your signature block. Okay? All right. So any questions on signature blocks? Now, have any of you that have a yeah. signature block, uh, have any of you, uh, Sorry, I'm, I'm trying to read something that somebody was posting. Um, try to send somebody a, let me get to, send somebody a file from your uh, Explorer. So, so something like this. Have you ever right clicked and said send to mail recipient? Have you ever noticed when you've done that? It's a nice feature because it does bring you immediately or it should bring you immediately into Outlook. Let's see. The new email. Oh, it's not going to let me because I've, um, but if you've ever had that happen, it's because I have a newer version of Outlook on my machine, so it's not going to let me. But what happens is you get a new email that looks like this, and have you noticed that if you have a sig well, first of all, you have no signature block at all. Have you, no have you ever noticed that? Yes. Okay. So two things happen. One is uh, that you have no signature block. And the other is if you put a signature block in, have you noticed that it's plain text? Yes. And so both of those things are very annoying. So one of the things that I do on, this is again called the Quick Access Toolbar, is I put the changing, notice that changing text from plain 
to HTML is on your format text. Well, a lot of people forget that, and it's a pain to go to. So I always put uh, HTML, as you can see, on my Quick Access Toolbar, this little toolbar. Are you guys familiar with your Quick Access Toolbar? Because it is the best thing ever. There was a direct question, how, how do you set it up and to talk about it more? So several people do not know okay. about it. Okay. And you should know that it is in Outlook, Excel, Word, PowerPoint, every single one of those. When Microsoft went to Office 2007 and 2010 to this ribbon, they knew that it would irritate many people because you can't find your tools anymore. Do you remember that? When you started out, it's like, where is that tool? Can't find it. So what they gave to everybody was this quick access toolbar, which you're probably not seeing here. You're probably seeing it up here. Because when you get the quick access toolbar, it shows above the ribbon. And you probably only have two or three little items on it. It doesn't give you much. So right up here, you should see something with two or three little items on it. Is that true? So one of the things I think is that why would you want one of the most useful toolbars for you to be as far away from your actual text as possible? I don't understand that. So I always, first thing I do is move this below the ribbon. This, by the way, is the ribbon. How would I move this below the ribbon? If you don't know how to do something, right click. Right click. So I'm going to right click anywhere on this quick access toolbar. And do you see where it says show below the quick access toolbar below the ribbon? By the way, this is all in the book that you guys have, but I'm going to go ahead and click on that. Do you see how it now shows below the ribbon? Mm -hmm. That easy. Okay. Now remember we talked about this HTML tool that I wanted added to it because you guys won't have that added to it. So it's on the format text. If I don't have the HTML tool on here, how would I get it on there? Right click. Right click. The cool thing is, if I ever ask you a question, 99% of the time you are going to be right if you say right click. So I would right click on HTML. The very top thing says Add to Quick Access Toolbar. Now those of you who have really good eyesight might notice that it's grayed out. The only reason it's grayed out is because it's already on my Quick Access Toolbar. Okay, so if I went to plain text, if I right click, do you see if I click on Add to Quick Access Toolbar, it is not grayed out. So now I have that on my Quick Access Toolbar. But I don't want it there. How do I get rid of it? Right click. Right click. Bridget's gaining confidence in her right click ability. Remove from Quick Access Toolbar. Is that not the coolest thing ever? This Quick Access Toolbar. So one of the things I do is I add the ability to change to HTML. So when I send a mail that doesn't have my signature block and it's plain text, all I have to do is click on HTML and then right to the right of that, is my signature. So whatever Microsoft does that I don't like, I try and fix it by putting it on my Quick Access Toolbar. Okay? So those, and so you may say, well, Sammy, how do I get the signature one on there? Well, right on this first tab, do you see where it says signature? So all I did was right clicked and added it to the Quick Access Toolbar. That easy. Okay? Another thing that I love in this new release is something and that, again, is in Word, Excel, Outlook, everywhere, is the ability to insert a screen clipping. Okay? So to insert a screen clipping in Outlook, you do need to be in an email, and you also can't be in the 2 or the CC or the BCC. You need to be in the body. So let's say you are working uh, on the internet or anywhere. Let's say you were working in Excel. Do you guys work in Excel or not much? Yeah. Or on the internet? Yes? Okay. Okay, so I'm going to go to Excel. One of the things that we know about Excel is when you copy and paste, sometimes the formatting doesn't look exactly the way you'd like, right? 
So I'm just going to go to print preview here in Excel. And I'm going to get exactly the portion that I want here of my email. Okay, I mean of my spreadsheet. All right. Then I'm going to go straight back to my email. Now you have to make sure you go straight back to your email. Because let me show you what the screen clipping does. So I'm going to go to insert. Click on the down arrow next to screenshot, and do you see at the bottom it says screen clipping? As soon as I click on that, it's going to take me to whatever I last saw, which is why it's so important you come straight back. So if, when I go to screen clipping, it's going to take me straight back to my Excel screen because it's what I last saw. Then it goes all dull gray. So what that means is it's now waiting for me to select what I would like to clip. So I make sure I'm nicely in the top right corner of what I'd like to do, or top left, excuse me, I know my right for my left. Then I start holding my left mouse button down and dragging across just the portion that I would like to clip. And as soon as I let go, boom, right in my email. Yes, question? So it's not recognizing the cells, it's only recognizing what you're outlining. Correct? Correct. Okay. Yes. And so now that was, I was showing you Excel. Let's look at, if I were looking at something on the internet. Okay, I want to take a picture of this purse for whatever reason. Again, the last thing I saw, go back to my email, make sure it goes straight there, click on insert, screenshot, Screen clip, boom, right back to this view, goes dull gray, carefully go to the upper left corner, down to the lower right, let go, boom. That same option is in Word, PowerPoint, everywhere. Now notice that was inserting a screen clip, but remember there was also insert a screenshot. If you're not as picky about just getting a small portion, if you don't mind getting the whole thing, when I click on insert screenshot, notice it shows me every single win window that I have open. So let's say you get an error message and you want to send it to your IT department, but you don't want to write down the incredibly long error message. So nice of you to just click on that screenshot and boom. What am I asking you? Well, give me your name. That's that simple. Oh. Now, those things are so nice that I like to have them on my quick access toolbar. Notice that I've got right here, insert screen clip right there. Okay. So again, if I didn't know how to put that on, I would go to insert. I would come down to screen clip, right click, and add to quick access toolbar. And it's on my Word quick access toolbar as well, my PowerPoint quick access toolbar as well. Okay, uh, so inserting. Quick question, you, you referenced a book. Um, what, what book was that that you were referencing earlier? Oh, yeah, my book. Um, I was asked to supply you with my entire Outlook manual. Um, so I don't know where you guys keep that, but that was that I was told was gonna to be available to people. Okay, uh, we will uh, make that available with the blog post. It has not been uh, distributed yet, but. Okay, so okay. Um, my book is a little over 100 pages. So if possible, if you could read it online as a, or just print out a copy uh, double-sided for like a, an entire department or a floor or something, because it does take up a lot of paper. So. Um, but I think it, it's really valuable to go over all the things that we've gone over today to be able to have a reference to, to use. And it shows you how to work with a quick access toolbar. Now with the quick access toolbar, um, remember I showed you how to right click and add and right click and remove. But a lot of people say, but Sandy, I would also like these to be in the order that I'd like them in. I'm one of those people. I like these to be in the order that I want. I don't want them just, hey, everything gets added to the end. So I don't know how to do that. 
How would I how would I do that? Anybody know? Okay. Right click. What a great answer. So I do have to be on the quick access toolbar somewhere, but right click on the quick access toolbar and you notice that it says customize. When I click on customize, on the left it shows me everything I could possibly add to the quick access toolbar. And on the right it shows me what I already have. See it says yeah. this is what I already have. So if I want to move this up or down, I just click on whatever I'd like to move, and this will move it up or down. Or I can remove it, or I can come over here, click, and add it. Now typically, if you add something from over here, it'll add it to the very bottom, meaning that you'll have to click the up arrow a bunch of times to get it to where you want to go. So my advice always is, Click wherever you'd like it to go beneath. So if I want it to go right underneath redo, I'm going to click on redo, then double click over here and do you see how it puts it right underneath? It'll just save you a lot of clicking on up and down arrows. Okay? Now remember I told you this shows you all the things that you can add to your quick access toolbar and I lied. This is only showing you popular commands, which generally aren't that popular, at least not for me. So I always click on popular commands and I click on all commands. This will show you all the amazing things that you can possibly put on the quick access toolbar. Okay? Really worth getting to know. Not so much in Outlook, but in Word and Excel, it'll, it'll just be a huge time saver for you. All right. So, any questions about creating or changing signatures or adding a screen clipping or changing the quick access toolbar, formatting, Which is better, screenshots, any adding of the screenshot or screen clipping to the ribbon, to the quick access How toolbar. did I add that to this? No, which one is the better option, the screenshot or the screen clipping? Oh, or that's a both? really good question. Um, that really is dependent on you. Now, if I, if I go to right click on screenshot and add it, I do want you to know that what happens is you get both in, in a way because if I click on this down arrow, not only am I going to get all my screenshots, but at the bottom is going to be screen clipping. I used to have both. I used to um, insert, I, I can now add in, um, adding a screen clipping as well. I used to have both of them side by side here, uh, and then I realized I really generally don't like the screenshot. I don't want, it has too much extraneous stuff. It has my ribbon, it has all this stuff that just gets in the way of what I want somebody to focus on. So I took off screenshot and only added screen clipping. So for me, that was beneficial. But it is a little more tricky to do a screen clip. As you saw, it had to be the last thing you saw, where with screenshot, just go like this and click. So it's, you know, so it depends what look you want. Is this okay or did you just want the wallet? Okay, hopefully that answers your question. Um, you're welcome. Does anybody need blind carbon copy? If you do, it's going to be under options and you just have to click on it one time and it will always be there unless you take it away. Okay? And that's if you want to add people that other people don't know are on the thread. Sometimes people have a hard time finding blind carbon copies, so I wanted to make sure. Okay, let's just be the email only class as opposed to the Outlook class, which is what I was asked to teach. Um, I would like to move on. I think I got out of Outlook though. Let's bring it back. Here we go. Um, does anybody have any questions on email? I will cover one other thing that I think is incredibly useful that doesn't just have to do with email, but it can, and that is auto uh, auto create. You know that if you have a folder, let's say I have this folder called NWA. If I wanted to put um, excuse me, I, should, I guess I could create one called NJP. If I wanted to put all of Sue Entrman's stuff in an NJP folder, 
I could just right click, I could say new folder, create NJP and just drag things over, right? So I can just highlight as many uh, items as I want and I can just drag them over to the folder of my choice, right? To move them, right? Okay, so that's great, that's moving. But what if, I'm gonna, let's see if this guy, remember earlier I said I really like people who have good signature blocks, which this person doesn't appear to? Nope, that's, okay. So I'm going to find, Bridget, who has an amazing signature block, okay? Look at all that nice information. So this is what I mean by auto-create. If I did not have Bridget as a contact, and I really want her in my contacts because I email her a lot, I call her a lot, then instead of having to do all that work, typing all that information in, all I have to do is drag her email on top of contacts, let go, and it automatically creates a contact with her name and her email address. Now this is why I love people who have good signature blocks, because that's not enough for me. I want the rest. So I can drag across legal assistant, let go, and then just drag that up to job title. Or if you'd rather cut and paste, you don't have to drag, you can just highlight, cut, paste. Now, it did get an extra blank in here and here, so I'm going to get rid of those extra blank lines. But how cool is that? And then what I usually do, because the whole email is in here, which I'm really not too interested in, so I just select it all and delete it. But now I've got a complete contact with no typos because I didn't type anything in two seconds flat. And then myself, I would go to something called categories, which we're going to look at in a minute. And I would say she's a BL client, which is a business law client. So with very little work, very little effort of mine, I've created a new client. So I would just click on save and close. Now anytime I want to go visit Bridget, I don't know if you've seen this thing here called Map It. If you click on Map It, it will take you straight into Bing Maps and show you exactly where she is. No retyping of the address because it's already there, right? Then if I need directions, I can click on directions, say where I'm coming from. So such a cool thing, Map It and Auto Create. Now I used Auto Create to create a contact, right? That's what I just showed you. And to do that, remember I just took her email and I dragged her on top of my contacts. Maybe that's not what you want. Maybe Bridget is asking me to do something and so I want it to be a task. If I drag her to my tasks and let go, it'll automatically create a task. Now, training on 930, question mark, may not be as great a description as you want. So maybe you change that to Outlook Training, whatever it is you want for the task. But how cool is that, that I don't need to write all this stuff down, I have it all here and I can save and close it. I can do a due date, a priority, whatever I want for my task. I can even send it to somebody else to do, which is my favorite, assign it to somebody else. Okay, but that's all I had to do to create a task was just drag it to my task. Maybe I need to meet with her. I can drag it to my calendar. So auto create says that drag from any folder to a folder of a different type. So not mail to mail, but mail to calendar, mail to task, mail to anything else. And it will create a new item of that type. The other reason that I really like this, especially if I create a task is, then I'm gonna delete this email message. My email box, as you may have noticed, gets way too big. So the neat thing is, because it creates a new item, it means that they're separate and I can delete the original email. So and two quick questions here. Uh, yeah. First one is, 
Could you quickly show how to have BCC always appear on the view again? Um, sure. Sure. Yeah, to do that, I was in a new email, and BCC is an option. So under options, you just click on BCC, and then from then on in, it's going to be there unless you take it off. Okay. It is also uh, something that I put on my quick access toolbar so I can click it on and off right from here. So once you've found it, you can right click and add it to your quick access toolbar if you want. I, I put it there mostly for training purposes because I just never take my BCC off. I just sort of leave it there. It doesn't hurt anything to have it there. Um, the auto create button. There is no auto create button. Auto create happens when you drag an item from one folder to another. So when I drag Bridget to calendar, it auto creates a calendar item. If I drag it to tasks, it'll create a task. If I drag it to contacts, it'll create a contact. It's just simply dragging from one folder to another. And you have a different type. Everybody okay with that? Okay. The original is still in the original folder? It is still in the original folder, hence the word create. It is creating a new item of a different type. It is not moving or anything like that. It is creating a new item. Good question. Another question here is, uh, can you explain V cards? I've tried forwarding them or attaching them from my contacts to other people's emails, but they can never open them as V cards on their end. Um, okay. I'm not a big fan of V cards. Uh, it adds, it adds V cards is a virtual card um, that you can attach that has your information. But when the person gets it, it looks like it's an attachment. So every time you go to save attachments, they have to try and not get your V card. So um, if you're trying to forward something to somebody, if you're just trying to take a contact and forward it, let's say, to me, then there's other ways of doing that. Um, so let's look at this person. Let's say I'd like to forward that. Notice, so I can just click and forward contact. And I would just do, if they have Outlook, I would just say as an Outlook contact. Okay? Or if they don't have Outlook, you can say forward as a text message. Okay? But the neat thing about forwarding as an Outlook contact, do you see how it looks like a little Outlook contact? That person then, when they receive your email, if they have Outlook, they can actually drag this right into their contacts and have your contact. Now, you want to be really careful uh, that that contact, because it does the entire contact, that it doesn't have any sensitive information that they shouldn't be getting. So scour that person's information prior to ever doing that. Okay. We had another All question. Right. Is, is there any way to add a field to a contact listing? For example, adding assistance name or phone number or um, board member contact. It's already there. Great question. It's already there. So uh, when you're in new contact, they make it, it. You used to see different tabs, that, and I think that was clearer to most people um, than this. This looks like this is all you've got. But if you click on details, that's where all that other information is kept. So you've got department, office, profession, manager's name, assistant's name, nickname. Uh, you even have birthday and anniversary. Now be careful. Uh, it's a nice feature, but what happens is if you put birthday or anniversary in here, it'll actually go onto your calendar as a yearly recurring item. So it's great if that's what you want to know, but not so great if you don't want them on your calendar. Okay. But uh, yeah, so it's right here. So general and details. Now there are even more fields than that. If you want, you can go to all fields. And if you look at, if you scroll down to all contact fields, but that's probably more than you want to know and probably more than we have time for in the class. But, but there are a lot of fields. And you can create your own fields. But again, that's beyond the scope of this class. We don't have time. 
Um, anyway, hopefully that answered your question. Um, all right. One thing you can do under view, view is whenever you want to change the look of something. So under view, if I go to um, change view and manage views, so, and this is all in my book, change view, manage views, and this top one is the one I'm currently in. If I click on modify, columns are these bits of information here, like company, that sort of thing. So let's say assistance name is something that you'd like to see, okay? and you don't want to have to double click and click on details each time, you can click on columns. And again, these are frequently used fields. So notice I'm not seeing assistance name because these are frequently used. If I say I want to see all contact fields, then over here you're going, to, excuse me, over here you're going to see assistance name. So I can bring assistance name wherever I want it. Let's say I want it after, oh, here's assistance phone. Now I've got assistance name right above assistance phone. And click on OK. And OK again. Oh. And OK again, or apply view, either way. But now if I have an assistant, it's going to show up. And if I have a phone, assistant phone, it'll show up. Now you're not seeing it because I don't type those things in. But if I did, they'd show up here. So it would save you when I want to call this Lynn's assistant, I wouldn't have to open her up and go to details. I could just see it right there on my screen. Let me put in an assistant's name. Um, what is her? Mary. Mary. Good enough. So notice that because now I do have an assistant, do you see how Mary shows up right there? Okay. Okay, let's quickly go back to calendar because we still haven't gotten too much in calendar. One of the things I wanted to show you, you've got some really nice views. This is a month view. Notice that I am quite the color coder. Um, I don't know if you guys like color coding. I like when Outlook does it automatically for me. Now there's two ways of color coding. One is to click on an item, okay, and then go to categorize and click on whatever color you'd like. Okay, so that would be one way of color coding. But notice that I have everything that starts with a B colon, which for me is business, B colon means business, is orange. Orange is my business color. So if you guys asked me to train for you on the 11th of August, I would type in B colon NJP training or whatever. Notice how without me doing a thing except typing in B colon, it turned it orange. So let's say for all you have trials and you want every time you type in the word trial for it to turn red. You know, whatever it is, you can have it automatically color code. Is that something that would be helpful for you to learn or not really? Okay. I see somebody shaking their head, so I'm going to assume yes. So I showed you to color code by hand, you would just click and you would choose a color, right? But if you want Outlook to do it for you. Remember, everything that has to do with looks is going to be on the view menu, and this is looks. Okay? Uh, this you might want to write down, but you don't have to because it is in my book. But I'm going to go to view settings, and under view settings, you see where it says conditional formatting. Once you click on conditional formatting, notice these are the ones I have business, birthdays my mother, my children. Um, so those are, those are some of the ones that I have. Now, if you want to add one, all you have to do is click on Add and give it a name. It doesn't really matter what you name it because this is only for you to know, okay? Trial or maybe I want to make it trial or due date or whatever. I want any of, anything that has trial or due in it, I want it to be red. Then I pick a color and I decide I want it to be red. Now, if it were me, I stay away from these really dark colors because they're just hard on your eyes. Notice all mine are sort of those uh, kind of lighter colors. So if I were to pick a red, it would definitely be this one. 
Now, since I already have a red, I'm going to pick something different. I'm going to pick yellow, okay? This is the most important part, condition. Condition is what tells Outlook what to search for. So this is where I type in trial and then a comma and do anything that I want it to search for. I just separate it with commas, okay? So like for birthday, I have birthday, B-day, and anniversary. I consider that, you know, whatever you want it to search for, click on OK, click on OK, click on OK. And now, if I say Jones trial, not trail, I really want to type in trail. Oh, so my green is taking over. Let me just see what happened. If it meets multiple criteria, it'll give it the color of the first criteria. So somehow it, I have something else on there already with a color. So I'm going to make my trial or do, I'm going to move it up in the list. So that's the first thing that it hits. There we go. My Jones trial is yellow. Um, if I say do on Thursday, whatever, that also turns yellow. Okay, so that's really handy. Now, why did, thank you, why did I type in B colon and not just B? Does anybody know wh why I did that? Well, if I just type in B, lunch with Bill is also going to turn orange because it'll have found a B. Does that make sense? So what I'm saying is try and make whatever it's going to search for somewhat unique. All right, so I'm going to go back to my view settings, conditional formatting, and I'm going to take this one off because I don't want it. But if I look at business, if I go to my condition, it's B colon, excuse me, I didn't want to do that one, but birthday, this is the one I was telling you about. I'm searching for birthday, B day, or anniversary. Any of those are going to turn gray if I type them in. Okay, any question on automatic color? No, move on. Okay. We don't have a lot of time left, so I wanted to cover a couple other things. Does anybody have a busy calendar or work for somebody who does? One of the things I've noticed is, like, if you ask me, what Wednesday could I possibly go to lunch? I'd be like, I haven't a clue. I would have to go to each day or I'd have to go to a week, it would be so hard for me to tell you just by looking at this. And so what I'd like you to learn is that this calendar is worth its little weight in gold because you're not just limited to day, work week, week, and month like you've been taught. If I want to see my Wednesdays, I can click on the first one. And then because they're not, if I, if I want to look at days that are right next to each other, like the fourth, fifth, and sixth, I can just drag. And let's say I also want to look at the 11th, 12th, and 13th. I can't just drag. I need to hold my control key down because it's not right next to it. So I'm going to drag, and I can see those days. But now my problem was Wednesdays. So I'm going to click on Wednesday, hold my control key down, and click on these other days. Is that not easier to be able to see what days I could possibly go to lunch? So using this little calendar, I can click here and control click on this week. I can see almost any view I want, and it is so much easier. Okay? The other thing I can use this calendar for is moving or copying items. So let's say that I'm going to put lunch here, which is, notice I just highlight, type in lunch, press enter. So most people think that to move, that all I can do is move to where I see. But what if I want to move this to August 2nd? People don't realize I can actually drag it to this little August 2nd here, let go, and now it's on August 2nd. So this little calendar is pretty amazing. Now a lot of people know how to move in this calendar, but they have no clue how to copy. So notice I can move, but what if I want to have lunch here and here? How would I do that? 
Yes, that's another thing that you should learn. But before I teach you control, which is brilliant, if you didn't know how, now remember before I told you, if you don't know how to do something, right click. This is one of that 1% of the time that it doesn't work. Notice Microsoft is being really mean. Normally right clicking allows you to copyright. So this is number two. There are two things I want you to remember, actually three. One was if you don't know how to do something, right click. The second is if left dragging, no, normally you just drag with your left mouse button, right, and that moves. If left dragging doesn't work, try dragging with your right mouse button. So if I drag with my right mouse button and let go, do you notice it gives me choices? Your right mouse button always gives you choices. So simply by dragging with my right mouse button, I can now copy. Copy. So we've learned right click, we've learned right drag, and then the last thing that I'd love for you to remember, if possible, if two things is all you want to remember, fine, but if I can get a third one in there, it's what Bridget just mentioned, and that is the control key is the copy key. What do I mean by that? I mean, if I drag lunch here, and I want to copy it instead of move it, if before I let go, I press my control key, do you notice that little plus appear? And notice I have two lunches? As long as my control key is down, when I let go of my mouse, I will have successfully copied. It doesn't matter if I start out by having it down. The only time it has to be down is before I let go of my mouse, notice the plus appears. If I let go, before I let go of my mouse, it'll move it because it'll say, oh, you changed your mind. Notice no plus. But if it's down when I let go of my mouse, boom. Pretty cool, huh? And that's not just in Word, uh, it's not just in Outlook, it's in Word, Excel, everywhere. C control is the copy key all the time. Okay? Okay, I was told that the last, we sort of entertained questions all throughout, but I was told to leave a few minutes at the end for questions. Does anyone have any questions at this point? This is Cheryl in Longview. I have a question. If you're looking and at before you three... Leave, Cheryl, I'll answer your question in a second. I just okay. want you to stay on the line if possible because I'm also going to give you a little introduction into OneNote, which is the best program Microsoft has come out with in years. It is phenomenal and will benefit your lives so much that I want you to come to that training because it's a great program, and I'm going to explain it a little bit at the end of this. Go ahead, ask your question. So if you're looking at three calendars in your office, can you do that? Um, uh, I've got it to copy, but can you do the move? Like can you move an appointment so from one person? If you've got three calendars, so over here I've got calendars. So I've got a calendar here. I'll click on these other two calendars like that. Okay. And so you've got all three of them showing. Is that what you're saying? And now you want uh -huh. to move from one to the other? Right. Or copy from one? I, can, I know how to do the copy, but I don't know how to do the move. So you've dragged from one to the other. It's going to copy first. Well, well, actually, there might be one way. Hang on. Yeah. So I don't usually teach this because it's not necessary because generally dragging is always going to move. When you're going from one calendar to the other, it assumes that you want the first person to have that as well. Right. So just like the control is the copy key, shift mm -hmm. is the move key. Okay. So if you hold your shift key down when you drag, you will successfully move it. Okay. Thank you. Uh-huh. So there was Any a quick question, question in the chat is can you show team calendars for the audience? Yes, group calendars. This actually, my calendars is a group. And so um, the nice thing about that is if I click on that, do you see that I can see them all at once, as opposed to having to select one calendar at a time. I can just click, and I can still unclick the ones that I don't want. Okay? So group calendar, which is also in my handout,
but it's under group uh, calendar groups. You click on calendar group and click on create a new calendar group and give it a name. So it could be attorneys, it could be Seattle, it could be what it could be conference rooms, it could be check signers. You know, any group of calendar uh, people calendars that you would like to see. So I'm going to give it a name. I'll call it. I'm going to clue. I'll call it Seattle. Click on OK. And then it'll come up with, uh, for you guys, probably your global address list, so people internal to wherever you're working. And that's what you're going to want to select from, because even though I've got a display of my contacts, I won't have their, it won't have uh, access to those calendars. But anyway, so you'll double click on whomever you'd like to actually have show up. Click on OK, and notice that it created a new group called Seattle. And so if I want to see who's in or out for the day to see, you know, or maybe I'm a receptionist, I need to know what's happening, it will show me all the free busy information for those people. Now the reason that um, you're not seeing any again is because they're not on a server. I can't see their information. But that's how you can get a calendar group, and you can then narrow down who you want to see or, or not see. Okay. So that's a calendar group, and but I don't want this group, so I'm going to delete the group. Any other questions? Feature in the 2010 that's not on the old one? That's not on the old? Yes, all the new that's features in 2010 are not on the old. There's several of them. Um, in my book, if you look at my book, um, right at the very beginning, starting on page two through page uh, 30, are all the new features in Outlook 2010. There's, there's a ton of new features in Outlook 2010. And you will not be able to, like uh, in mail, a lot of things that I showed you in mail, conversation view, the um, people pane, most of, a lot of what I taught you today is not in earlier releases, um, which is why I wanted to make you aware that they were there. That's one of the reasons I chose. So I have five minutes left. So I wanted to introduce you to the most amazing program, um, which is called OneNote. And OneNote is basically a note-taking piece of software. Does anybody um, Has anybody ever heard of Evernote and use that? It's a note-taking piece of software. The difference is, well, many differences, but one of them is that OneNote, so OneNote is, is, um, has binders. So I've got a to-do binder, I've got a travel binder, technical issues, computer information, um, Microsoft Office, all my investments, all my gift certificates like Groupons, my vacations, business opportunities. These are just, you make any binders you want. And so the reason I love OneNote is because I consider myself a really organized person, but I don't always remember where I organize something to. So for instance, let's say my garage door opener, it loses its code. And it used to be like, okay, what folder did I file it under? Did I file it under home? Did I file it under genie garage door? You know, where is that darn thing? Now I never have to wonder because everything in my life is in OneNote. If I don't know how to open up my garage door, oh, I just click on, type in GAR for garage, garage door reset, and it talks about uh, the garage door opener. If I get a new computer and I forgot my product keys, I don't remember what the product keys are, um, I look at product keys, and every single product key for all my different software is here. It, if I want to make a recipe that has tomatoes, all my recipes are right here. And it's not, just, it's not just something that you can use on your laptop. It's across all platforms. So it'll be on your phone. It'll be on your iPad. It'll be on your Kindle. Whatever you have, it can be on any smartphone that you've got. So when I go on vacation and they tell me that I'm staying in a hotel, and they say, oh, we don't have your reservation, I can actually show them my, reser my reservations. Uh, so it just, so if you're collaborating, let's say, to get more businessy, if you're collaborating on a case, 
You can have a notebook per person that you're working on, and you can work with three other people on it. Let's say that you're working with the director. You and the director can have a folder that, of different things that you're working on. Um, so it's just a really easy way to collaborate with other people because you can share folders just with certain people. Like I have a travel folder that I share with my husband so he can add to that at any time. Okay, so we keep restaurants, that sort of thing. Travel. If you travel, let's say you are working for one of the directors and they need to travel. So notice that I have my email for my car, for my air, for all of that in here. How did I get it in here? Well, if you notice on in Outlook, you have a send to OneNote. So every time I get a confirmation for air or whatever, I can just click on OneNote and it'll just ask me where I'd like to send it to OneNote and it'll put it in there for me. If you're on the internet and you do some research for a particular case that's going to trial, you're on the internet and you want to send something to OneNote, let's, uh, is this? let's go to Google, oh, maybe not Google, I need to be in something that's uh, here. Then. You have something that you want to send to OneNote that you've researched. You can just highlight what you'd like. Let's go here. Whatever the article is, just highlight it, right click, send to OneNote. So incredibly easy to do research. Maybe you're working on a case, maybe you're working on a pleading. So you've got the pleading open in one window and you've got OneNote open in another window, any notes that you take in OneNote will automatically open up that pleading so the person doesn't have to even know where it is on the network and bring that person directly to the spot that you were working on that you wanted to have help with, whether it's OneNote, PowerPoint, whatever. So any notes that you take in OneNote on a document or a PowerPoint presentation or whatever can hyperlink to that document. So as long as you're on the same network, it can open it up. So my husband's always giving me a hard time because I can never find my keys because I put them in all different places and I can never find them. OneNote is like always putting your keys in the same place because it doesn't matter what information I'm looking for, it will always be in OneNote, and you saw how amazingly easy it is to search on it. Okay, and in OneNote, you can also, you can put video recordings, you can put screen clappings, you can put audio recordings, you can just, you can create tables, you can bring in all sorts of information, and anything you copy and paste into OneNote is completely searchable. So you paste in an internet article that's, that's not even, OCR text, and I can still find it. It really will change your life. Wait, you can take a screen clipping of a PDF document yeah. and put it in OneNote, and yeah. OneNote can search that. Search it, yes, it searches, it, yes. It even lets you extract text. So, from an excerpt, yes. from a PDF. Now, it doesn't look great because it's, right. you know, because it's not formatted, yeah. so it, but it's better than having to type everything back in. Huh. So anyway, that's my, that's my uh, incredibly short um, intro to OneNote to say it's so worth you coming, uh, just an hour and a half of your time. And the more you use OneNote, the more you're going to find it's just absolutely invaluable to your life. So I want to thank you guys for coming. It's been, go ahead. How can we find your book? Sorry? How can we find your book? We will post the book up with a blog post on lsntap.org. Uh, should be up within a week, hopefully, maybe a day or two. Um, also, I have a link to a SurveyMonkey survey for feedback on this training. This is the first time we've done this format. Uh, we'd really appreciate the feedback as it's something we will uh, be considering for uh, next year's webinar schedule. Um, also, thank you, everybody, uh, who is here. Um, we have the OneNote training coming up in about a month, 
I believe it is on September, just had the date, September 9th. Same place, uh, join me. Um, all of our other trainings are listed at lsncap.org under trainings. We've got at least one a month throughout the rest of the year, and we'll be doing the same next year. Um, as the books, um, they are for your use. Feel free to use them, but please don't give them away to people outside. Thank you so much for coming. I hope to see you next month.